Hey guys, my name is Clay Williams, and today I want to talk to you about doing simple, non-metallic swords. I have my sword model here, and this is a straight sword, it's not a curved sword. Um, so I'm going to start with black and white. So I take my Vallejo white and my Reaper black. The brands of white and black that you use don't really matter as long as you're comfortable with them and you like the result you get. So when we're looking at the shape of a straight sword, usually there's a divide in the middle and two broad shapes on the side of the sword. Now what we want to do is create the illusion of reflection. So depending on the way the sword is angled, whether it's angled up or angled down, where the model is holding it, we want to start our highlight on the top flat section. So I'm going to paint one side of the sword because this, the other side of the sword would just be an, a copy of what we're doing on this one side. So this model looks like he's holding the sword a little bit up, so the tip of the sword is going to be catching the most light, and that's where I want to start developing my gradient. So I'm going to start with white, and I'm going to work my way to black on the top side of the sword. So as a reference for me, I usually like to take my, my highlights and sort of sketch them in on the sword. So the bottom of the sword is gonna be the opposite value gradient. So in the middle, we'll have a sort of a section where the mid-tones meet up on the sword. So with my white, pull it away from my main paint pool. And I wanna gray it down a little bit. Now, black is a very strong tone. So if you mix, for instance, 50-50 black and white, you're not gonna get a middle tone gray. You're gonna get more of a really, really dark gray, about 75 to 80% because of the strength of that pigment in the black paint. And it can differ just a little bit from brand to brand, but for the most part, the black is always gonna be a dominant pigment. Now for metallics, again, we always wanna follow the rule of uh, thirds for simple metallics. You want your mid-tone to be, your mid-tone to your highlight to be one-third and your mid-tone to shadow to be about two-thirds of your highlight. And so on my palette here, I'm just mixing down a little bit darker gray, pulling it from my highlight to the shadow. Until I work myself to a decent mid-tone. Now don't worry about the intersections between the colors, your layer, those are okay. You can always go back and you can mix your grays and you can kind of pull a line in between each one of those intersections or you can just glaze it with a lighter gray if you want to get rid of those marks. But for today we're gonna, we're gonna focus on the color and the reflection. And getting that sword looking like it's a pretty used piece of battlefield equipment. And when you're mixing black and white, always remember to rotate your brush around a few times. Don't just hold it steady and mix from one side because the black or the gray will build up on the back side of the brush. And as you move your brush from your palette to your model, What'll happen is you rotate your hand and some of that white might get on there and you won't, you won't have a good mixed color like you thought you did. And sometimes you'll just end up with the wrong side of the brush and the wrong color on your model. And I'm a brush licker, so sometimes I use a little bit of spit to blend out the intersection between my colors. If the 
transition is a little too sharp. Right now we got a pretty shiny sword. Our shadow area is kind of dominating our highlight, so I'm gonna make a choice to slide my rule of thirds more to a 50-50. I want it to look more like an iron sword instead of a super, super shiny sword. So all I'm doing is taking these colors. I have a little bit of a gradient here on my, on my palette, and I'm going back and pulling my, my highlights through my shadow to make those highlights just a little bit more dominant. All right, so now we have developed our gradient from light to dark on the side of the sword. So the other important part about doing a non-metallic sword is the edging. We wanna make sure the edges are thrown off light so that sword looks nice and sharp. And what we wanna do is in our light to mid-tone area, we wanna use a pure white to edge. So luckily, swords have a nice, more than 90 degree edge that we can pull a nice sharp line with. We're gonna do that on both outside edges, readjusting my holder to get a better grip. Don't worry if you get a little too much on the back side because we're not working on that yet. We can always clean that up later. And depending on your model edge might be a little sharper than others. And in our shadow area, we actually wanna go down and we wanna make our white a little less vibrant because we're throwing off a little less light on that edge and that stark highlight of the pure white will we'll fight against the black a little too much. So our mid-tone is gonna look plenty bright on the bottom side of that sword and on the top back edge of the sword. And again, it's always important to be comfortable when you're painting, so feel like you can't get to the model, readjust, and make sure you can get a good brush stroke in there. All right. Got one small little highlight area that I wanna fix here on the top edge. Pull down a little bit. Use my thumb to blend it out just a little bit. And then in the middle of this sword, we have a deep groove. Um, I believe that's called a fuller. Um, we wanna highlight that as well. So. We're gonna take a little bit of mid-tone and just pull it down the center. Now, if you look, we all know that the top edge of a curve, the brightest point is gonna be at the top. But if we think about a concave object, the brightest point is actually at the bottom of that as well. Um, it's just because the light funnels in and it catches in the center. So we can pull a line straight down the middle of the sword. It doesn't have to be a super opaque line. It can be fairly thin. But there is gonna be a highlight if your swords have that little curved section in the middle. We'll leave dark on either side of that because we don't wanna to have to blend a small space like that. And we're gonna take our slightly grayed white, and we're gonna pull it edge highlight at the top of the sword, at the top of that fuller. And 
And this is where the detail brush comes in handy because these are smaller shapes. And again, depending on your model, may be harder to get that rounded edge highlighted. The Games Workshop models usually have really big, nice swords that you can pull highlights on. And when I'm edging, I'm looking for that edge, kind of scrubbing my brush down the side, but I'm not using the tip of my brush till I get to a flat spot. I'm actually just using the side of my brush and pulling it along that edge because it's a lot harder to try and pull a line down a 90 degree intersection than it is just to use the edge of the brush to catch that shape. I'm going to take a little bit of my brighter white here, catch the middle, create a point. And then as I develop that little shape in the center of the sword, my highlight doesn't make as much sense here, so I can always go back and I can pull that highlight toward the middle of that shape, just to give the roundness of that sword as it meets that depression that runs through the center. All right, so now that I have my grayscale developed, metal reflects color. Now, depending on the colors that you're using in your bases, and what environment you want your model to be in, it can change. The sky is red, the reflection is going to be red. The sky is blue, the reflection is going to be a blue. Depends on what planet your warriors are fighting on. So we're going to go fairly natural with this first one. And we're going to use the sky blue. So this is magic blue from Vallejo. What do I want to do? Pull a little bit of this paint away from my main ball of paint, and I'm going to create what we call a glaze. So I'm going to take this paint and I'm going to water it down until it pulls in on itself on the palette. Now I don't want a super water. I don't want the, the pigment separating from the paint. I want the pigment to draw in on itself and be evenly dispersed in the water. Now just like we do in dry brushing, we want to unload paint from the brush because if we have all this moisture in the brush, when we touch it to the model, it's going to unload everywhere on that model. It's going to create a mess. We don't want that. We don't want to wash. We want to glaze. Now, I always use my thumb to sort of check the consistency of, of the glaze. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit not all the way to the white, but from the higher point of the mid-tone to just kind of in between that section. I'm going to add a little bit of blue, just a little bit of blue. And what that's going to represent is the light that's shining on the model is coming from a blue sky. It's going to make our metal look a little more interesting and a little more natural. Simple step, real quick. If the sky is giving us a blue light that's reflecting off the high points of the model, the ground is going to give us a brown or earthy tone if they're in a brown desolate battlefield with no grass or anything around. Now you could use green if you want to reflect the fact that they're in a green battlefield, but those, that's going to be our shadow color or our shadow glaze. So I'm going to add a little bit of this uh, armor brown to my palette. And what I'm going to do, just like what I did with the, uh, the highlight area, is water it down just a little bit. Now this is an airbrush paint, so I don't need as much water in my paint to thin it out. But I still want it kind of pulling in on itself on the palette. What I mean by pulling in is when you brush it out on the palette, the paint kind of conforms and makes a little bubble again. 
and then unload the paint. And then just like we did with our highlight, I wanna put that sort of brownish color in the mid-tone to black. Kind of not all the way to the black and not all the way to the mid-tone, not touching the blue, but just in the center of that area. And that's gonna give our sword just a, that tad bit more naturalistic look, like it's reflecting the environment around it. Now, as you improve with non-metallic swords and silvers or grayscale, you can always use the colors that are around the object. Like we have some gold here by our sword. If you want to reflect some of that gold tone or yellow tone in the sword, you could. But today, we're going to keep it a little bit more simple. I have one little spot here that I want to straighten up before we go on to spot highlights just to make the edge of my sword look a little bit straighter. All right, so now that we got our tones in, I'm gonna go in and do a few spot highlights on the sword. So we take our pure white, and what this is gonna represent is maybe the swords hit some other swords or some armor, and there's a few nicks, and those nicks are gonna pick up little tiny pips of light, and so along the edge of the sword, I can just add a few of these, all right? Real tiny. And you can pull them, you don't have to dot them. You can make them look like little streaks. And the reason I wanna do this after I do my color for my reflections is because I don't want these white little pips to have any of that color in them. All right, so I have a few little nicks in our sword here. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed watching how to do non-metallic swords and check out some of the other videos on the channel. We'll see you guys next time.